All right, so as with the previous one, we're once again going to look at a work paper. We're gonna go through this one just a little bit differently. Instead of working left to right, this time we're actually just gonna work our way through the list of tick marks and see where they apply on the page. Now, as far as kind of getting your bearings, on the left-hand side, we have the cost or basis of the various fixed assets, and top to bottom is a reconciliation. So we have the beginning balance at the top, additions, then disposals, and then totals. And on the right-hand side of the page, we have the same information for accumulated depreciation on the same. At the very far right, for the disposal, we also are gonna look at the loss or profit that we recognized on that disposal. But let's start working our way through tick marks. First, A, footed, cross-footed. Again, that just means they're checking the math and you'll see A's scattered all over this chart for a number of the different totals at the bottom as well as some of the sums that are added across. So anywhere you see that letter A, it's the most prevalent tick mark noted. Uh, that's where we had to recheck the math. Now, some might look at that and go, but wait, Mike, why isn't there an A for that beginning balance column? Or remember, we would have checked the math last year, and so as long as we're tying it back to last year's audit, we don't really need to reiterate we checked the math again this year because it frankly wasn't necessary. All right, tick mark B. We recalculated depreciation expense and tested for reasonableness without exception. See analytical procedure in work paper I-2. Now, we'll start with that analytical procedure. Remember, analytical procedures as a substantive test are best suited for income statement accounts that lack management discretion, and depreciation is a perfect example. It is a highly predictable and highly dependable P&L item. So they went through and they basically said, look, we feel that that's an appropriate amount, and they're citing there the fact that we recognized 45,000 of depreciation on currently existing assets at the beginning of the year. We're gonna do something a little bit different for the depreciation on the two new acquisitions, but they feel that 45,000 as a percentage of the outstanding balance is appropriate. Okay, letter C takes us into some of the activity. On April 15, the company bought a building. We inspected the escrow document and agreed the amount without exception. We also noted that the purchase was approved in the board minutes in January for $2.5 million. D is the depreciation. We recalculate depreciation expense without exception. We also noted the useful life of the new asset is consistent with the depreciation policy. As an auditor, we love policies. We love if the company says, we feel this is a reasonable policy for handling depreciation. Maybe they say, as a standard policy, we depreciate buildings straight line over 30 years or 40 years or what have you. As long as the policy is deemed reasonable and appropriate, as long as they follow the policy, then whatever amount they calculate should be reasonable and appropriate as well. Notice, they did that not only for the building we just discussed, but they also did that same check for the copy machine, which is discussed in tick mark E. It says on May 5th, they bought a copy machine. In this case, they were able to agree the amount back to the purchase order, invoice, and disbursement. Okay, letter F is the longest one, but not surprising as it involves the disposal. And you'll note that F is supporting the amount of disposal, the amount of accumulated depreciation concurrent with that disposal, as well as the recognition of the profit or loss. On June 10, the company sold truck 005. We examined the contract for evidence of sale and noted that we received $15,000 in payment. They reviewed the fixed asset ledger confirming the equipment is no longer present. They examined the detail and noted the accumulated depreciation had also been removed properly. So at that point, they've confirmed, yep, they got rid of an asset that was on the books for $35,000 and they got rid of the correct accumulated depreciation of $25,000. Now that tells us the net book value of that asset at disposal was ten dollars since they confirmed the amount of payment for the asset at 15, that's what gives us our profit on the sale of $5,000. As we noted earlier for the beginning balances, that's tick mark G, that's referencing to the prior year audit. And finally, the ending balances, that's the 17.4 million of assets and about 480,000 of accumulated depreciation, as well as the $5,000 gain on sale are all traced back to the trial balance without exception. So that gives you a walkthrough of a very typical fixed asset work paper.